me tell you, brother, the best time I've ever had is the time when I was pushing the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. When, when I joined the Mars in 1968, those were good times, and these are good times right now. I was at my happiest, at my best, when I'm pushing the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. When I stop pushing the teaching of, when I stop pushing the teaching of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, brother, that's when I fail. And you've been my only friend. You came in my life Where well, I had nobody You gave me somebody Took this old heart of mine Dust it off, yes you did Gave me something to live for I represent to you Not a heart but I represent to you God in person. Yes. <laughs> especially mine, I couldn't think of a time where, you know, I had the greatest joy, the greatest respect, integrity, you know, just everything seemed to be a plus, you know. Welcome to our show. I'm your host, Brother Lance Shabazz. You're viewing the Lance Shabazz Show. As always, we encourage you to call a friend, call a neighbor, let them know the Lance Shabazz Show is on the air right now. We're also on the World Wide Web, www.lanceshabazz.com, www.lanceshabazz.com. Brothers and sisters, I'm here in Chicago at the studio of Crow TV, and I'm just so grateful and thankful for this fine staff here in Chicago. Muslims who believe in the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, except Allah who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And I'm happy and honored to have that today again as our guest, the business manager, Brother Munir Muhammad. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. How are you, sir? I'm fine by Allah's grace. Brother, I'm just so happy uh, to be here in Chicago, and I'm just grateful for the uh, opportunity, the privilege to be here in the studio. And uh, just thank you for so much for assisting and helping and aid with the program. And uh, Well, we're happy, brother, that any time a man tell us he wants to work, you know, we believe it. Donald Elijah Muhammad, uh, in fact, you and I, as we were riding, we thought about something that Donald Elijah Muhammad wrote, how to get a job and stay employed or yes, something. Sir. And I, I remember we had this little uh, booklet, and we used to try to show people just how in-depth that the messenger was. And so... I, I'm just always excited when I see these people step up to the plate, and it shows me that goodly is the reward for the worker. Yes, he sir. or she abides in the garden where she pleases. He or she uh, pleases. I always want to include the she because we have people that acknowledge us, and they say the brothers at Crow, they never acknowledge uh, the sisters, but we have some helpers, and uh, we appreciate uh, them from all walks of life. Uh, yeah, so tell me about the crew. How did you assembly such a great cast? First of all, it was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, That's sir. how we really did it. But see, what people don't know is this, that we also had people from all walks of life that worked with us. Uh, we uh, were being used at first. You know, uh, there was someone who told me about cable uh, many, many years ago, but I'm not technically inclined, as you know. So that's one of the reasons we don't have a restaurant, because I don't cook very well but if I did we would have a restaurant I'm not just being facetious but I have to get into it and drive myself but anyway but this TV thing was forcing us more and more that we needed to get involved so Shaid Muslim had a uh, uh, cable license but he was just a cameraman you mm -hmm. know when I said he was only licensed for camera because this is what they would do they would play games with you they never wanted you to know what a full production, as you probably right. learned. So people would get you to assist with them. So when someone told me uh, more about it, I got Mandine involved and a brother by the name of Yaku. Not the Yaku who <laughs> created, <laughs> but it, this brother, this is true. Yes, sir. And this brother right now may be doing time. He loved us, brother. 
He was a good brother. He didn't do very much talking, but when he was getting ready to do some time, he came by and bought theology time a few weeks before they was taking him down. But we loved him. And uh, so they were cameramen. And, but no one never wanted us to know. And this is where uh, Kim Muhammad came in. She saw us struggling, remembered what the messenger told us. And that's why you had to want for your brother and sister what you want for yourself. She came in and did the work that none of us knew how to do. She found out the requirements for having your own production, you know? Mm -hmm. And when she found that out, there were other people that were good at this but they wanted to use us in another way. They liked the host aspect, but they too wanted to control certain aspects, didn't want us to know certain things, but Kim was our eyes and ears. But we didn't want her to be used either, so we had to protect her. So many times we did a lot of work down there so we could see, till we could get better. And as we got better and we you know, knew it was time to let people go because we were doing so many shows till she got a series. They forced us, say, y'all own too much. We was on every day, yes, you know, because we worked night and day. Yes, sir. Even though, and we had to edit our own stuff, and you know what yeah, editing could be. It could take you an hour to do 20 seconds. Okay. And we used to sit over here at night sometime, and it would be so fascinating when we get that one last thing down, everybody get a little clap, mm -hmm. and we'd leave, you know, so. I mean, it's been an interesting road. So once we got so uh, established with the series, then people, even someone came in from New York and interviewed us because of our diversity, if you will, and they were able to put us on the show. So, you know, uh, things began to look up for us, and, uh, you know, the rest is history. We decided that we uh, couldn't tape when we got ready down there, so right. we needed a studio and uh, the rest is history. We have a studio now, as you can see, whether it's Sunday morning at 7 a.m., whether it's uh, Monday morning at prayer time, we can tape, and we thank Almighty God, Allah, a real God. Yes, sir. Who appeared in the person of Master Freud Muhammad. I really mean this. Yes, sir. I, I was with you yesterday at the McCormick uh, place, and we saw at the Black Expo how, um, you know, we ran across quite a few people who recognize you, but they relate you with the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you feel about that? Well, I am the Nation of Islam, as yes, I told sir. one of the brothers. When I say that, I don't mean that from a vain point, but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us I it, yes, you sir. know? And it's only one nation. Now, you hear Negroes talk that old first resurrection talk, and that second, it, we, we know of only one resurrection, yes, and that's right. the one that the messenger did. Nobody else had the power right. to do it. So they are children. We are adults. So I know how the people feel, and that's what the young Muslims have to understand. Most of them have gone to the mosque as a result of our 22 years uh, in this work. See, they come to us. We're not a mosque. And we would tell them, if you want to go to the mosque, you can go over to uh, see uh, Minister Farrakhan, and we would encourage that. And there was a time we would stop our meeting at, tw at uh, 2 o'clock, uh, 1.30, just in time, so many of us would go over to the mosque. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did for a long time, because we wanted to show our support. But some people started to get confused, as if that we were dependent in that area, and uh, that was not true. So it was not uh, what you call reciprocity. The right. reciprocity was not being shown, and people started to think that we needed that acknowledgement, which we didn't then, nor do we need it now. It was a brotherhood because we all claim the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Well, we, the archives, and we keep the history, then in order for people to learn, they had to come here. And that was a time young students from the University of Islam would come over and learn about history that they weren't learning about at the mosque. We had a, a beautiful relationship, but every now and then someone gets confused and start to think that uh, they could dictate. And, you know, of course, this wasn't coming from uh, uh, the minister uh, directly, but there were people who felt they was doing his bidding. Yes, and uh, when I would uh, speak about it and uh, nothing ever was done about it, so, you know, uh, the earth is big. And so uh, it's enough space for everybody. So we do what we do, and, and everybody else do what they do. So 
when you uh, envisioned or uh, the brothers, all, all three or four of you at the beginning, had the vision of Crow, have it met your expectations or have it exceeded what you saw at 22 or 22 years ago? No, it hasn't exceeded because I'm expecting much more. Yes, See, sir. I told people when people wake up and realize what we've done, oh man, sh people already come from around the world, but local people don't realize that when they really want to know the history. People contact us, but we're not the best contact people because depending on how they come to us. See, we're not desperate. We're not eager to uh, make things available so they can exploit the messenger. We want to carefully be in control on how they do things like that. Uh, So-called American Negro Carl Evans contacted us once. We didn't even entertain him, and we whooped him on the radio. Yes, he sir. came into Chicago. We ran him out of town quickly, not physically, but orally, you know, with the whipping that we put on him. And as you saw, C-SPAN uh, gave him a forum, and it was 10 people in the audience. That's right. See, but we, I, I don't care what we do, C-SPAN and other large groups, they don't want to highlight us because we're talking specifically about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and that's something that the whole world can't afford because if you hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad directly, they start to look at him, uh, the people are going to say, man. Now, you've traveled uh, around the world, right. been to a lot of places. You uh, you had a conversation with uh, Muammar Gaddafi in right. Libya. D do you bring up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Let me say this. I don't have that tape. I want to say something about this. I've been to Libya on two occasions. The last time they had uh, a press conference with the black press, God is my witness. Mandine was stuck in Tunisia, and he didn't make it. That's when it was difficult to travel. He was my cameraman. Yes, sir. On two occasions, one time my son was my cameraman, but we had what they used to joke about us, say, say every time you see Munir, you got them little camcorders, right. and say, you know, uh, made mockery of our cameras. But we didn't have the sound, so I couldn't uh, do a proper job. But this second time, now, the final call has this tape. But I told Colonel Gaddafi, when it was my turn to ask him a question, I said, uh, I've waited 25 years to ask you this question. Why did you help the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? I was so fascinated with his answer. He said, when I was a little boy growing up, that Abdel Nasser was always the leader for black people uh, throughout uh, the world, but Abdel Nasser had a love for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And he knew that as a young boy. This Gaddafi at nine. Yes, That's what uh, coincides with your love for the messenger growing up in the Nation of Islam. Well, they loved Abdel Nasser. He was the strong man in Egypt. So when he knew that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was here and needing support, he sent uh, loaned the Honorable Elijah Muhammad four million dollars. He loaned it to him. But the messenger talks about it in theology time. So they loaned us the money. They didn't give it to us. But when they learn of us, they will give it to us. Now, as you also know, Khalid Muhammad went to Libya and stayed around a couple of weeks to get a tape to Gaddafi for Minister Farrakhan. See, people think, and this is what I think the world needs to know, See, they think that, you know, nobody can be received in Africa or those countries except a high-profile person like the minister. See, that's what makes Jesse Jackson so effective. Jesse Jackson sit with the messenger. He know what the world is expecting. That's why Jesse go whether you invite him or not. That's right. He go, you see, he, he did something that no other Negro has done. He pushed Ronald Reagan out the way. <laughs> you understand? When he brought them, see, Jesse know his power. That's right. You understand? He brought so, the minister to the White House. Actually. Oh, yeah. He yes, brought, sir. yeah. If the minister went to the White House, that's the only way he got there is with right. Jesse. That's I don't right. know if he brought him there or not. But yeah, when, uh, when the Lieutenant Robert Goodman, the return Oh, from yeah, Syria, the minister, well, okay. the minister yeah. was there. Yeah. He shook yeah. Ronald Reagan's hand. Oh, yeah? Yes, he did. Okay. Well, see, now you, you've got all the details yes, on that. I know Jesse took an entourage over right. there. And, uh, but my point is, that's the way that people see you, mm -hmm. you know? I'm, like they said, uh, Munir ain't nothing. He wasn't really a member of the Nation of Islam. 
if I'm in Africa tomorrow, I can show you pictures how they surrounded me, you know? And they didn't surround me because I was a great celebrity, but I'm a black man. Even in Libya on the street, they knew about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So people don't tell you that. And so everybody that goes, and even Akbar, you know, who's the international representative, but I've been disappointed with him over the years. And the reason I say that, because I used to have him on my program all the time. And to me, he became disingenuous, you know, and they always want to bring other people, but they weren't really interested in a Muslim like me knowing the history because I would share it with people. Now, Prince Asiel, Ben Israel, I give him great credit. Never been selfish, Robbie Ben Ami. They did more in my travels, you know, to accommodate me than my own Muslim brothers and sisters. And these Negroes, and when I say these Negroes, Muslims, who are not genuine and not truthful because they won't tell that truth, you see? But see, the black press could go to these countries free of charge. People mm -hmm. don't tell you that, but they go through large organizations sometimes. You know, someone with the kind of credentials we got and the camera crew we got, who wouldn't want us to travel and do films and documentaries just like they do? But see, I don't have the group that's willing to challenge that. I had a guy that you know, Emmanuel Omar, yes. who is good. We were working with the counselors a few times, but Emmanuel, who's a historian, but he didn't uh, follow up like he, he could. And uh, I've interviewed a few people from the consulate, but when they associate you with the nation, the broader nation, sometimes they have a tendency to think that we few, even though you got a thousand churches, and they don't ask Jesse which denomination he is. Jesse, his church come on Saturday. Mm -hmm. He's pushed, you understand? And, uh, but he still can do what he want. But see, when it comes to us, they say, uh, aren't you with the minister? You know, I'm with the messenger, you know? So I'm, I'm saying, Lynn, that's what we should be doing. Yes, sir. See, I remember we were going to go to the Sudan, and uh, abruptly that was stopped, you know? And for whatever reason, then next thing I know, some of the other Negroes were able to go, but when Munir was uh, scheduled to go on that trip, uh, they stopped. So there's a lot of little things that's been done, and people really don't want me talking about it. But they say, you can't stop progress. Yes, you know, sir. we still effective because they came to us. You understand, when the BBC wanted to know something about the Nation of Islam, they didn't go directly uh, to the mosque. And the reason they did, because they had a tendency to, to make people think it was bigger than what it was, you understand? Yes, so sir. we always wanted to put the messenger out front again, and that's what we've been able to do. So as I say, they tried to hide us like the messenger say, uh, you, you look like, uh, you see how big I am now. You, you mm -hmm. understand? Yes, sir. So uh, maybe I went a long ways to say that, huh? Yeah, he said, Did uh, I? He said you know, <laughs> that's beautiful, brother. Yeah. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. um, it's so always something new under the sun to talk. They said it doesn't new, but we could talk forever, brother, because yes, this history, and that's why I'm telling you, don't be discouraged, like the messenger said. So he was not discouraged. No, sir. No matter what they bring to us, we keep going. And at one point, at some point, uh, and I pray that God bless the minister to share with those people what he shared on the show. Like he told me, he said, brother, they see how I treat you. And they don't like that. Some of these are, are jealous because as I told him, I said, many of these brothers and sisters I don't even speak to. And it pains my heart, brother. But they want to dictate to somebody like me that work in the trenches like this. How could I allow that? No, sir. I, I would be foolish, wouldn't I? Yes, sir. So I don't do that, and they get disappointed because they somebody told them, say, go over there, that's your archive. You got to act like it's your archive. That means you support this archive. But they don't do that. Right. And some have been so foolish till they even broke our window. You understand? And the Negro who broke our window was the same Negro who got his start in knowing something about Donald Elijah Muhammad from us. They don't like me to talk about that. But that's one of the real problems uh, that they have. Uh, uh, you know, they, they're not uh, uh, civilized people at all. Will you have the minister as uh, on your program again? You know, let me say this to you, brother. I'll put it to you like this. You know, if the minister wanted to come on my program, if he said, Brother Munir, I'd like to come on and share something, I would do it. But I get so uh, sick when I see them run up behind WVOE and I hear the lies that they tell 
in reference to it. See, it was me who took Cliff Kelly over there uh, to him. Cliff yeah. Kelly wasn't dealing with those people. I took him over there, you understand? And I took many journalists over there to deal with him. And that's what makes me angry, and they so phony with that kind of stuff. I'm glad you, know? you mentioned that because the perception people have sometimes is that you know, you were begging to get in to see the minister or you wanted to be around him, but it was a mutual thing. You were bringing people to him sure. and, and high people, people who were, you know, I had was, some high positions. That's right. It, and that was what we had agreed that I would do. Did you work with to get in the name of Elijah Muhammad? Yeah. And, and let me tell you, they tabled that in co committee. We had that name, but Wali Muhammad. in committee. That's why you only see one little sign of the Elijah Muhammad. In fact, Alderman Bloom, who opposed it, I just saw him recently at the Harbor Cafe, the yes, Marina sir. Harbor Cafe, who was go went out his way to speak to me. We had an argument in the city council, but they blamed the minister and because they were doing that old anti-Semitic talk and uh, that kind of thing. But it was about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and that's why we have Crow Lane here because they stopped it because Wally Muhammad was speaking before he had the ability to do as many of those young boys did. You know, they get so excited and start talking before they had the ability to do. And that's why we didn't get it at that time. They, so they stopped it. And it's been in committee for uh, probably as long as he been gone now, it's, I guess 15, 16 years. You know, that's the way they do things in Chicago. If they see where it's going to cause some controversy, they table it in committee until the air blows over. It just hasn't blown over yet. <laughs> yes, but, but see, brother, I don't, the minister has done wonderful things for me. And those things that he did for me is to help me to understand how to defend the messenger. I love being with him. Every time I would sit with him and I, I'd sit and have a, have a talk with him, I said, brother, especially after the Million Man March, I said at least two million people want to talk to you, and it's an honor for me to talk to you. I was happy that he rebuilt. I saw what Wallace did to him. Wallace brought him here to fail. You understand? But the minister tell you, I wasn't starving, you know? And, you know, like some of these guys, you know, uh, uh, want to portray it. No. No, but I, I, I enjoyed it. Who wouldn't want to be in the midst of, of the minister? That's right. I always loved being with him, you know? And, uh, but I, I was big enough to know when it was time for me to go. And that's mm -hmm. what people can understand. See, I'm a free man, too. It happens when you're free. But I was free when I met him. Right. You understand? And some of the places that you traveled with him, you want to? Well, you know, see, the, the minister, once you got into another country, see, I was not part of the entourage that those boys and girls went. I just happened to be in Libya because it was the black press and he was going to be there, you know. Every year the Libyan have these kind of things, you know. And so, you know, and once you, uh, you know, and I've been to Israel with Prince Hassel and them, but see Jordan and all of that, Egypt is, is so connected. But I was not in Egypt with him. See, in fact, the friendship too, in fact, I had a word with him about that because he took everybody but the Muslim, you know. And, uh, you know, and I was one that, uh, and I, I said to him uh, on one occasion, and I don't think he was very happy about it, I said, brother, you, you take all these people, and uh, he had given me the indication that he wanted me to go. But again, just like I didn't take that job, I'm glad that he didn't take me there too. Yeah, I know yeah. Uh, one time having dinner with uh, Minister Kareem, he had uh, made the remark that, you know, he never asked me to go out the country with him. Mm -hmm. He said he told me he was going to uh, bring me back a Mercedes from Germany, but uh, I guess it was just lip talk. But he, mm -hmm. he said, but I'm going to get one myself, which he did. You know. Yeah, well, I don't blame him, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'll just put it to you like that. I don't put a lot in there. I understood uh, where the minister was coming from because you have to understand, I heard John Muhammad say that Wallace saw him as strong. See, I'm the type of person that, you know, I'm not dependent. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll ask them, because I felt, see, we, we supported that Salam restaurant. I had a fundraiser at the minister's house. I initiated that yes, to sir. raise money for the, the restaurant. A lot of people don't know it. It's not their business. But my point is, I supported it in more ways than one. And I've done things with the Nation of Islam because I love the Nation of Islam, and if that's what the minister was doing, fine. But I knew that I would never sit under that umbrella. You understand? I was never. Well, I, I'm going to take instructions from who? 
You, you understand? I'm not in the ranks. My uniform is in the window. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said you have to become a temple yourself. So that's what I try to do. And there's no knock on them, but they, they don't know me. These guys, I've been doing this for a long time. I, I'm 58 years old. I'm not a baby. Yes, you understand? And there are people who started out doing this when we started. But we've accumulated something. In fact, when we first got opened this place up, the minister came through. We gave him the courtesy of, uh, of uh, inspecting this. He didn't give us cash for it. You understand? So they, they assumed because he came over that he must have sent us a bundle of money. Now, I asked him to support us down the line, and he has done some things. But I, I don't think, and he would agree, that he has not done uh, what he could have done and things that he's done for other people. But I'm not mad with it because it just only makes us do things uh, on our own. Yes, well, sir. I've had more help from business people. And like some Negro, even one of my relatives said, they could talk to me. They, let me say this, uh, you know, and this for any Negro that's <laughs> in, in, in the world. You know, Negro say, well, uh, Munir, uh, Mayor Daly can get a better audience with me. Like I, I, I told one of my relatives once before, they were saying, uh, you know, I, I told them how I look. You see these dedicated people here? Yes, sir. I love these people. That's the criteria with me. You, you understand? Yes, sir. So my relatives, some of them I don't even speak to, brother, and some of them I don't care if I ever see again. Close relatives, you understand? I wouldn't go to their funeral, less more than go to... Uh, a barbitza with them, you know, whatever you call it. So I'm saying that so they can be clear. My work is involved in this, you understand? And if they're not involved with this, east and west. And I told them at my mother's funeral, and I'm telling them on the air if they ever see this show, and many of them may watch YouTube, but now but I don't waste time with them. So now you know if I feel this way about my relatives, can you imagine some Negro Muslim? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, so you, you get what I'm saying. What was I saying about the Negro Muslims anyway? Why, why, why did I want to criticize them? Uh, I was just trying to, you know. You, what did you ask me? You went into the area about the fundraiser the, for the Salaam. Oh, and, okay. And you was going in that, in that direction. But yeah. I wanted to be clear, as I said at the McCormick Inn, how, you know. Oh, so that don't, that, see, what that does is show me that the people enjoy the, the program. Yes, but they really not listening to a lot as they think they are, mm -hmm. you know, because they would see that there's, uh, you know, no real relationship there because we do different things. Right. And uh, they pr try their very best not to mention me, and uh, I try my very best not to mention them. Yes, you sir. know, so, I mean, the earth is big. I mean that because I don't have time to waste. You know, if I've been doing this for 22 years, like I tell some people, if I'm in the house, they should be coming to speak to me. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't be running up to uh, to, uh, to speak to them. Yes, See, I, I, I'm sure that I would be civil uh, with the minister, but I don't go out my way and he doesn't go out here. Right. And we both are winding down, you know, in, in our age and, and things like that. But, uh, uh, you know, I would talk to him if he wanted to come on the show and he expressed an interest. But I was just sharing with you that even the followers, those Negroes talk to me about because I have politicians on and I deal with other people. See, they don't want me to have friendship in all walks of life. So even though I was the one that brought Cliff Kelly on over there, but Cliff and I don't socialize together, you know? So they take that to mean that Cliff is ours. Hell, I don't care. You, mm -hmm. you understand? Yes, sir. So my point is he's on the radio, I'm on television. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. But I share this in the public with them so when they call me, a hypocrite for dealing with white politicians, they upset because they can't deal with them. But when the Negroes are in trouble, they're on the phone trying to see if Munir can help them. Right. As we get ready to Have wind it, did down. Did you hear what I said? I hear you. Okay. As we get ready to wind down, um, what's your, you know, five, ten years from now, where do you see uh, Crow? And I see Crow where people go say, man, that was a great organization. That is an organization that made us to realize how great the messenger is. Yes, sir. That's what I see. And even in this, if, if, I, if I sound angry, I'd love to be apologetic in that because I don't want to sound angry. I just love the Honorable Elijah Muhammad so much, and he has been so wronged by these people in Chicago. But it's really not their fault because the powers that be set that in motion. They don't even see it, man. It's like how the earth is rotating at 1,037 or 30 miles per hour. We don't even feel it. 
where they can't even detect what the government has done. But they told him, don't even mention Elijah. So you see on the TV stations now, in the left-hand corner, they have these reminders of the show that's going to come on. They keep subliminally feeding this to you. Well, subliminally, they're telling you, no Elijah, no Elijah. You understand? Don't even name your children Elijah. <laughs> that's how bad it is, Lance. So that's why we have to keep doing what we do, brother. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. So it's just uh, beautiful, brother. Like I said, I enjoy every time I come to Chicago, it but, recharges but, my battery. Go ahead. Can I say something about the crew that you had on before? Um, Kim and, uh, and Mandine. I thought that was the finest representation of Crow. And you mentioned five or ten years. They are the future. And you see, as Mandine told you, even though he has a great uh, title, you know, what he does, but he was telling you it's always somebody in the wings mm -hmm. waiting to come along, even though he's had an, just think, an 18-year career with us. Yes, he has. Uh, just a baby. Mm -hmm. But that shows you something, that we success don't depend on numbers. I think Kim told you that at That's one right. point. And because we are so effective in our numbers, and let me tell you this, Kim spoke at one of our Founders Day and at the Salam Restaurant, because every year we would have it at the Salam Restaurant. And the minister was uh, in the back room getting ready to watch the Super Bowl on the day. See, I used to have my Founders Day on Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And one of my best friends, Elsie uh, Hickenbottom, he said, Munir. So I never came out for anything like the Super Bowl. I mean, when the Super Bowl was on, but he was my keynote speaker one time. And Kim was speaking, and it stopped the minister in his tracks as it some of those sisters who was the MGTs, who was wearing the uniform, she told them she didn't know nothing about the MGT, but she knew something about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right. And that was one of the finest talks, which he agreed was the fi one of the final talks. And that's what we've been doing year in and year out. So I ask you, you saw Conrad Muhammad, who was with the minister for years. He wanted to emulate him and be like him. And where is he now? He's in a, a preacher in a church. In the church. Reverend Conrad. And Conrad. reconcile it, to going yes, back to Tillot. What Negro you know would give up the name Muhammad? You understand? And see, so my point being. We got to wrap up, brother. Okay. I, 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 okay. That, that led to something else. I yeah, well, you think just, about it. I, Who's brother, firmly rooted in knowledge? Yes, sir. But well, we're with Brother Munir Muhammad. I thank you so much. From this time to next time, peace, power, so, uh, love, solidarity, and unity. I salam alaikum. Right. You got when you hit that, I was like, ah. Oh.